Hey everyone, it's V. Welcome back to the channel. So today we're getting into chapter four, Controlled Reverie, from the book Prayer, The Art of Believing by Neville Goddard. If you haven't listened to the previous three chapters, I highly suggest doing so, so you kind of have an understanding of what we are talking about here, and it'll make a lot more sense to you. So I will link those in the info box below, as well as the comments, so it's easy for you guys to find. All right, so let's get into chapter four, Controlled Reverie. Everyone is amenable to the same psychological laws which govern the ordinary hypnotic subject. He is amenable to control by suggestion. In hypnosis, the objective senses are partly or totally suspended. However, no matter how profoundly the objective senses are locked in hypnosis, the subjective faculties are alert and the subject recognizes everything that goes on around him. The activity and power of the subjective mind are proportionate to the sleep of the objective mind. Suggestions which appear powerless when presented directly to the objective consciousness are highly efficacious when the subject is in a hypnotic state. The hypnotic state is simply being unaware, objectively. In hypnotism, the conscious mind is put to sleep and the subconscious powers are exposed as to be directly reached by suggestion. It is easy to see from this, providing you accept the truth of mental suggestions, that anyone not objectively aware of you is in a profound hypnotic state relative to you. Therefore, curse not the king, know not in thy thought, and curse not the rich in the bedchamber, for a bird of the air shall carry the voice and that which hath wings shall tell the matter. ECC 1020 from the Bible. What you sincerely believe as true of another, you will awaken within him. No one need be entranced in the ordinary manner to be helped. If the subject is consciously unaware of the suggestion, and if the suggestion is given with conviction and confidently accepted by the operator as true, then you have the ideal setting for a successful prayer. Represent the subject to yourself mentally as though he had already done that which you desire him to do. Mentally speak to him and congratulate him on having done what you want him to do. Mentally see him in the state you want him to obtain. Within the circle of its action, every word subjectively spoken awakens objectively what it affirms. Incredulity on the part of the subject is no hindrance when you are in control of your reverie. Bold assertion by you, while you are in a partly subjective state, awakens what you affirm. Self-confidence on your part and the thorough belief in the truth of your mental assertion are all that is needed to produce results. Visualize the subject and imagine that you hear his voice. This establishes contact with his subjective mind. Then imagine what he is telling you what you want to hear. If you want to send him words of health and wealth, then imagine that he is telling you, I have never felt better and I have never had more in my life. And mentally tell him of your joy in witnessing his good fortune. Imagine that you see and you hear his joy. A mental conversation with the subjective image of another must be in a manner which does not express the slightest doubt as to the truth of what you hear and say. If you have the least idea that you do not believe what you have imagined you have heard and seen, the subject will not comply. For your subjective mind will transmit only your fixed ideas. Only fixed ideas can awaken their vibratory correlates in those toward whom they are directed. In the controlled reverie, ideas must be suggested with the utmost care. If you do not control your imagination in the reverie, your imagination will control you. Whatever you suggest with confidence is law to the subjective mind. It is under obligation to objectify that which you mentally affirm. This is important, I'm going to read that again. Whatever you suggest with confidence is law to your subjective mind. It is under obligation to objectify that which you mentally affirm. That is the law of assumption, you guys. What you assume to be true, what your mind is assuming to be true, will objectify, will externalize in your reality. And I'm going to break it down really quickly. What Neville is talking about here is using the law of assumption, using the power of your mind to 
assume that someone else is feeling better. Say you have a friend in your life or a family member and maybe they aren't doing so well and you want them to be gainfully employed or you want their health to be better. Use the power of your mind to assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled of what you're wanting to happen. If you want your friend to be feeling better, make a mental image, a mental video in your mind that he is telling you that he is doing well in his life. Go to the end. Make a visual representation, like a video in your mind of the end state. If your friend isn't doing well right now, or maybe he's unemployed or lacking in any area of his life, hear him in your mind that he is telling you he is doing well and he's doing great and feel it to be real so that you can bring that future moment into your present in a meditative state and this will externalize okay so back to neville whatever you suggest with confidence is law to the subjective mind it is under obligation to objectify that which you mentally affirm not only does the subject execute the state affirmed, but he does it as though the decision had come of itself or the idea had originated by him. So what Neville is saying is when you use the power of your mind or the law of assumption to assume that someone else is better, the person in their life will come across a circumstance that will make them better. And he will think that it had been his own idea or that out of the blue, this thing came to him and everything worked out perfectly. I use this technique all the time, but I'm going to give one good example. So I had a friend who was struggling with their own employment. Um, they didn't like their job and I did a meditation technique. Actually, it didn't really go into meditation. I just went into a daydream and saw it from the end state that they were a successful business owner they had their own business and clients were coming to them and they were much happier doing their own business versus working for someone else at the time i had suggested it to them and they were totally against the idea but i kept going into my imagination because honestly i thought it was a better idea that they started their own business and did it this way anyways because I assumed that they would make more money and be more fulfilled, but they couldn't see that. So all I did was I did a few daydreams, imaginations, where they were already successful in their business and people loved them. And a couple weeks later, they just decided to quit and continue on with their business. And all of a sudden, people just started coming to them and they weren't even doing advertising or anything. And it worked out great. This is the power of the imagination and you can use your imagination to help other people. Neville is saying like when you use the law of assumption to help others, they just come across the path naturally on their own or the idea will just kind of come to them like, oh, I should start a business or I should apply for that job or I should do this or, you know, they're just going on their day to day life and something happens to put them on that path that you visualize for them. It's really interesting how everything ties in and this also goes if you're trying to manifest a text from someone or a call or whatever this is how this stuff works when you think about someone it gets implanted into their subconscious mind and they unconsciously act on it and vice versa like everything is connected um, the last chapter i did more talking on telepathy and how we're all unconsciously and some of us consciously using telepathy on a day-to-day -day basis when you think of someone and then they just end up calling you and you're like, oh, that's weird. I was just thinking about you and or I was just talking about you and you ran into someone. That's because your unconscious minds are all connected together. So this is how imagination creates things and how you can create a better future for someone else. Even if they are consciously ignoring your suggestions, you can use your imagination to help bring a better future to them unconsciously and then in their life it will be like a miracle to them or like the idea had come to them it was their idea sort of thing and back to neville control of the subconscious is dominion over all each state obeys one mind's control control of the subconscious is accomplished through control of your beliefs which in turn is the all-potent factor in the visible states imagination and faith are the secrets of creation. And that concludes chapter four, Controlled Reverie. 
Alrighty, you guys. So let me know what you thought of that. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and feel free to comment down below. Tomorrow, we are going to be getting into chapter five, Law of Thought Transmission. I'm sure we're going to be deep diving more into the telepathy side of that. I haven't actually read that chapter yet, so it should be interesting. But until then, if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification to know when I release the next chapter. I'm not really on a schedule. I've just been doing these chapters each morning. I am on a different time schedule because I'm over here in Asia right now. But that concludes that. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in and until tomorrow, peace and love. Take care.